At number one, Siyuan Street, Siyuan Borough, Taipei, stands a gorgeous and elegant Baroque building. Within its bowels, this fan-shaped, symmetrical building has quietly guarded the old pump works for more than a century. This is the birthplace of the Taipei water supply system a century ago, and a starting point for the modernization of Taipei City. It also represents a page in the history of the development of tap water in Taipei, and by extension, all of Taiwan. In 1885, Taiwan was established as a province of China. During the six-year term of its first governor, Liu Mingchuan, a new policy of local improvement was launched. It involved a grand undertaking of a broad range of infrastructure projects. In view of water usage demand and drinking water hygiene, Liu in 1888 hired Japanese experts to drill wells in Taipei. The first Western-style Aichishan well in Taiwan was installed at the intersection of Hangyang Road and Chongxing South Road in today's Taipei. An iron pipe was drilled into the ground. The groundwater flowed up through the iron pipe and was then routed to a water storage tank. This marked the beginning of Taipei's municipal public water supply. Clearly, the actions taken back then by Liu Mingchuan to begin supplying water via modernized infrastructure were also a kind of point-by-point -point approach to supplying public water. Modernized tap water facilities in Taipei date from the early days of the Japanese colonial era. In the battles to take control of Taiwan, the Japanese army incurred no more than 100 deaths or so due to fighting, while over 4,600 died due to illness. So clean water became an urgent need. In 1896, Goto Shinpei came to Taiwan to assist with improving sanitation. He recommended hiring a Scot, William K. Burton, as a project technician to undertake surveys relevant to sanitation engineering and water main construction. ただ if we peruse the records of the colonial governor's office collected by the Taiwan Historica Archive, before taking up the post of expert technician for sanitation facilities at the governor's office, Burton sent a telegram to Goto Shinpei explaining his difficulties. Dear Dr. Goto, I find that I cannot get an able assistant to accept the position without some definite idea of what the arrangement is to be. Mr. Hermano, whom I should particularly like to take with me, says he would be willing to go with me, leaving the question of salary on one side. We've arrived in Taiwan. What a wonderful beginning. We have to immediately start our investigation. In just over a month, the mentor and the apprentice rushed around to undertake a survey of sanitary facilities in an attempt to find solutions. Sir, there's no dike in the Tans River. In the upstream tidal area, a great deal of refuse has collected on the riverbed. 
Mr. Hermano, a great deal of debris has collected behind the dwellings. There is refuse throughout the environs in the water and on the land. That September, Burton submitted a Sanitation Works survey report to the Colonial Governor's Office, explaining his recommendations for improving the sanitation of Taipei streets. The basis of the urban plan lies in improving the water supply and the sewer lines. The city's sanitation situation is quite severe. If there is to be infrastructure built, it will have to start from destruction. Before this, water usage in the early period was primary through drilling wells. The overflow from such drilled wells could be diverted to the public sewer to dilute the sewage. When the Taipei waterway is built in the future, it should have the surface water as its primary source. In 1896, Burton and his assistant checked the outlying area around Taipei to find suitable water sources. Now that the plum rains have ended, the weather seems to be getting hotter. We have already arrived at the upstream stretch of the Sindian River. The water here is very clear. Oh, that sounds like shots from the valley. Let's hide behind this boulder. Oh, sir, your face is fast. And you have a fever? Have you come down with malaria? Let's first head back to there. After three years of conducting surveys in Taiwan, Burden succumbed to an illness. And Hamana Miyoshi carried on his teacher's legacy by taking charge of constructing Taipei's supply system. Hamana san wa Burton sensei no kyoju didai no saigo no mana desu nan desu. Eh mochiron motto mo sugureta ano gakusei de atta to iu koto wa tozen yueru koto nan desu. Construction of the Taipei Waterway began in 1907. Among locations selected by Burton, Hamano settled upon constructing a water intake from the Xindian River at the foot of Guanyin Mountain in the Gongguan district of the city. Diagonal是在比较新电机上游，距离比较远，近水以后再输送到台北的这个都会区来哈，是比较不符成本。那第三个呢，就是选举在我们现在的这个呃公馆近水的这个部分，这个新电机呢哈，到了这个地方刚好
呃，在这边最重要的一个精神就是高层差，利用这个高度的落差，就是用自然重力流到所谓的沉淀到过滤，它可以节省当时的电力使用。那沉淀池运用的科学原理。就是利用比重，比水重的悬浮粒子比较大型的，在这一道程序就可以沉淀下去。那过滤就是铺了沙层，那去过滤水中更细小的粒子，让这个水达到洁净的效果。The pump house is the heart of the entire waterworks facility. It constitutes the core motive force for drawing in raw water and emitting clean water. To give the public peace of mind regarding the use of water, and to become familiar with this advanced pipeline for supplying water, a gorgeous and elegant building was constructed around the pump house. The pump house was built so beautifully. In the time of the Daily News, the Daily News reported that the Nisi Water Service Director Gao Chang Chen Shilang, because he wanted to promote the Taipei people's new clean water facilities, he thought that the beautiful things could improve people's confidence in the facilities. 这个建筑物虽然规模不大，但是它的动态感跟气势，就是可以满足当时由官方在主导自来水政策这样子的一个雄心壮志的表征。The pump house is typical of the work of Japanese architect Moriyama Matsuo during the early period of Taiwan's modern history. The name of the designer is still clearly visible on the architectural drawings that have survived to this very day. 其实深山松之助在日本本土已经非常的有名了。那当时候他毕业设计是他们班上第一名啊，然后他又念了研究所去学习那个设备方面，所以他是一个在美学跟技术方面都非常呃呃非常上手的一个呃设计师啊。当时候他来到台湾主要是为了台湾总督府的净土。啊，所以他在这个期间呢，一方面参加净土，一方面呢，他就兼着，呃，做了蛮多的设计案。The exterior of the pump house is fan-shaped, with a row of towering Greco-Roman columns on the front, exquisite medallions on the stigma, turrets on both sides of the building. And elaborate obelisks, gables, and domes. This fully manifests a neoclassical architectural style. 深山松之助本身是一个对于建筑构造跟材料非常具有实验跟企图心的一个建筑师啊。那他采用了一个弧面的弧形的曲面，让它看起来有一种巴洛克的动感。虽然外观是古典的，但是内部的钢筋混凝土让它积聚在运转的时候，整个构造是非常的坚固。那另外在运转的时候会产生的高温和高热呢，就是透过了地下的排热孔。然后从前面的花台，就是让这些热气散出，以及我们看到它的长窗，就是热气往上升也是可以从这些窗户排出去。为了怕那些玻璃破掉，我们可以看到在玻璃分割上面是用比较小块的造型，让它看起来也有一点古典花纹的装饰。The clean water cistern on Guanyin Mountain has a unique appearance with a square but elegant layout. This is the oldest clean water reservoir in Taipei. It was built with the most advanced reinforced concrete at the time, with an excavated semi-basement structure. To ensure water quality, there are many ingenious designs from the inside out. 整个底下呢，它是用 A、B 两槽，然后呢，另外一个当做预备的。到了后来呢，也会考虑到彼此之间的调配使用。基本上呢，为了保持水源的干净呢，有这种导水墙的这样的一个设施，让水在里头能够呃活动啊、呃，表面在覆土，避免污染。顶上再加上这种通风的设施，这个通气孔呢，它是用螺旋形的方式，外部的空气。要旋转进去，那可以做一个循环跟调节。我想这个是一个维持水池的一定的清洁的一种方式。However, as Taipei continued to grow in population and size, by the fourth year after the Taipei Waterworks facility opened, it had reached full capacity, and the first expansion project was begun in the additional space set aside in the park. The colonial governor's office also undertook a review of its water supply policy, 
shifting from its originally gratis water supply system to a metered one to reduce household water consumption by charging for usage. 随着这个用水的人口越来越多，那需求越来越高，尤其是在夏季尖峰用水的时候，造成水量不足。那一直到了一九二五年呢，就把这个放任积水的方式改成所谓的这个计量积水。有一张报纸上面特别的刊登，有一个日本和服的女生，那她特别拿了一个水桶以及一个所谓的水表，提醒民众这个计量积水师的时代来临。In 1925, the population of Taipei City broke through the 200,000 level, and the entire city expanded to the east on a large scale. Public use of water was tight, and it was imperative to find new water sources. In 1927, the Taipei Water Works launched its second expansion project, with plans to construct the Caosan water pipeline system using the clean and abundant underground springs south of Datuan Mountain. The supervisor of the review, Sato Fujijiro, was also a student of Burton. He was responsible for the overall design policy in the first draft of Nagano Yuki's design. Sensei,これが一番初めに私の計画した草山水道の設計図です。Nagano-kun,水質検査からしてもここの湧き水の水質は素晴らしい。起爆処置だけで十分だ。沈殿ろ過は非常ではないだろう。八田洋一さんと市川雄一さんは大屯山で三カ所の湧き水を実地調査した後、一つ目と三つ目の湧き水の量が豊富なので、優先して使用することを提案したのです。なるほど、大地水
通通把它拆掉。那曼尼兹混凝土的很很硬的，嗯，那打贝壳都非常非常困难的了。一百多年来的这些工程做得这么好。To ensure the quality and sustainability of water sources for the Greater Taipei area, the government in 1978 designated the upper reaches of the Xindian River as a water source protection area, the first such protection area established in Taiwan. In 1987, the Feitsui Reservoir was completed and became a stable reserve source for the Greater Taipei metropolitan area. At present, Taipei has five water treatment sites, Gongguan, Changxin, Zhitan, Shuangxi, and Yangmi. These jointly form a dense water supply network. In 1945, the tap water penetration rate in Taipei was only 22%. Nowadays, it is 99.66%, and the underground water supply network exceeds 6,200 kilometers. More than 2.3 million tons of water is supplied every day, providing 5 million people with drinking water. This far exceeds the original 20,000 tons over a century ago. Traversing the history of Taipei's tap water development attests to the trajectory of Taipei City's expansion and development. As one walks into the tall and bright pump house, the high arched space does not have a single column. Sunlight streams in from the window frames on both sides, as if coalescing time and space. The old black water pumps no longer bear the responsibility of pumping raw water and transporting clean water. This has become a national third-level monument, and thus a drinking water museum. Together with the Guanyin Mountain Reservoir, Water Stillment Room, and Li Shui Pumping Station, it is connected to today's Taipei Water Park. The Caosan Water Pipeline still maintains its function of a hundred years ago in supplying water. It was designated as a historic monument in 2004 and was systematically preserved, becoming the first water pipeline living monument in Taiwan that remains in operation. It is a symbol of the whole city of Taiwan. It has a system of water and water system to ensure that the people in the city are healthy. The Taipei Water Pipeline and Caoshan Water Pipeline have become cultural assets of Taipei and, by extension, Taiwan. From this look at the earliest facility, we have come to understand where drinking water comes and where it goes. Only by cherishing and being thankful for the history of those sources can we recognize water for what it is, learn about it, realize its role in our lives, and then cherish, love, and protect it thereby reviving the harmonious symbiosis between mankind and water.